Anguttara Nikaya, The Numerical Discourses. Navakanipata, Book of the Nines. Suttas 73 to 82. Sammapadhana Vagga, The Section on Right Effort. Sikha Sutta, The Training. Bhikkhus, there are these five failings that make one unfit for the training. What five? Destruction of life. Taking what is not freely given. Engaging in sexual conduct. Telling lies or speaking what is not true. And consuming substances that delude the mind, whether by taking intoxicants, fermented drinks and psychedelic substances as well as smoking and chewing betel nut or tobacco. These, therefore, bhikkhus, are the five failings that make one unfit for the training. But, bhikkhus, to fight off and get rid of these five failings that make one unfit for the training, you must practice the four right efforts. What are these four? Here, the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, begins by generating the strong desire and fervency within him, as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any not yet arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not arise in the heart in the first place, as he guards by keeping the heart free from any negative states from ever arising within him. Next, the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged and with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not remain nor be tolerated in the heart. This he does as he abandons them immediately at the first sign of their presence as he keeps ignoring and dropping them, while keeping the heart free from any negative states that may have arisen within him. Next, the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, continues generating the strong desire and fervency within him, as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any not yet arisen wholesome and good merit-making qualities or thoughts do arise in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly purify his heart, by engendering positive states of mind to enduringly flow and keep arising within him. And the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged, and with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him, he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication making sure that all arisen, wholesome, and good merit-making qualities or thoughts keep being cultivated in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly develop and purify his heart while maintaining and strengthening the already arisen positive states of mind to continuously develop and keep flourishing within him as they reach maturity. Therefore, because you must practice these four right efforts in order to fight off and get rid of those five failings that make one unfit for the training. Nivarana Sutta on the Obstructions Bhikkhus, there are these five obstructions. What five? The obstruction of sensual desire, the obstruction of loathing and hatred, the obstructions of drowsiness and procrastination, the obstructions of restlessness and worry, and the obstruction of being doubtful. Bhikkhus, these are therefore the five obstructions. But Bhikkhus, to get rid of these five obstructions, you must practice the four right efforts. And what are these four? Here, the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, begins by generating the strong desire and fervency within him, as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any not yet arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not arise in the heart in the first place, 
as he keeps guard by holding the heart free from any negative states from ever arising within him. Next, the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged and with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him, applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not remain nor be tolerated in the heart. This he does as he abandons them immediately at the first sign of their presence, as he keeps ignoring and dropping them, while keeping the heart free from any negative states that may have arisen within him. Next, the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, continues generating the strong desire and fervency within him, as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any not yet arisen wholesome and good merit-making qualities or thoughts do arise in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly purify his heart, by engendering positive states of mind to enduringly flow and keep arising within him. And the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged, and with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him, he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that all arisen, wholesome, and good merit-making qualities or thoughts keep being cultivated in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly develop and purify his heart, while maintaining and strengthening the already arisen positive states of mind to continuously develop and keep flourishing within him as they reach maturity. Therefore, bhikkhus, you must practice these four right efforts in order to get rid of these five obstructions. Kamaguna Sutta The Five Strands of Sensual Pleasures Bhikkhus, there are these five strands of sensual pleasure. What five? Pleasant forms that are picked up by the eyes that are enjoyable and lovely, driving one to want to look at again and for longer, provoking passions to arise and agitate the heart. Pleasant audible sounds that are picked up by the ears that are enjoyable and lovely, driving one to want to listen to again and for longer, provoking passions to arise and agitate the heart. Pleasant odors that are picked up by the nose, that are enjoyable and lovely, driving one to want to smell again and for longer, provoking passions to arise and agitate the heart. Pleasant flavors that are picked up by the tongue, that are enjoyable and lovely, driving one to want to taste again and for longer, provoking passions to arise and agitate the heart. Pleasant touches that are picked up by the body, that are enjoyable and lovely, driving one to want to touch again and for longer, provoking passions to arise and agitate the heart. These bhikkhus are therefore the five strands of sensual pleasure. But, bhikkhus, to get rid of these five strands of sensual pleasure, you must practice the four right efforts. And what are these four? Here, the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, begins by generating the strong desire and fervency within him, as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any not yet arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not arise in the heart in the first place, as he keeps guard and holds the heart free from any negative states from ever arising within him. Next, the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged and with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him, applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not remain nor be tolerated in the heart. This he does as he abandons them immediately at the first sign of their presence, as he keeps ignoring and dropping them, while keeping the heart free from any negative states that may have arisen within him. Next, 
The bhikkhu, while engaging fully, continues generating the strong desire and fervency within him, as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication making sure that any not yet arisen wholesome and good merit-making qualities or thoughts do arise in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly purify his heart, by engendering positive states of mind to enduringly flow and keep arising within him. And the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged, and with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him, he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that all arisen wholesome and good merit-making qualities or thoughts keep being cultivated in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly develop and purify his heart, while maintaining and strengthening the already arisen positive states of mind to continuously develop and keep flourishing within him as they reach maturity. Therefore, bhikkhus, you must practice these four right efforts in order to get rid of these five strands of sensual pleasure. Upadana Khandha Sutta Grabbing on to the aggregates. Bhikkhus, there are these five aggregates that one grabs on to. What five? The aggregate of material form one grabs onto. The aggregate of feelings one grabs onto. The aggregate of memories or perceptions one grabs onto. The aggregate of habitual drives one grabs onto. The aggregate of consciousness or sense awareness which one grabs onto. These bhikkhus. Therefore, are the five aggregates that one grabs onto. Now, bhikkhus, to give up and overcome the tendency to grab onto these five aggregates, you must practice the four right efforts. And what are these four? Here, the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, begins by generating the strong desire and fervency within him, as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication making sure that any not yet arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not arise in the heart in the first place, as he keeps guard by holding the heart free from any negative states from ever arising within him. Next, the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged, and with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him, he applies himself with a genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any arisen, unwholesome, or evil qualities or thoughts do not remain nor be tolerated in the heart. This he does as he abandons them immediately at the first sign of their presence, as he keeps ignoring and dropping them while keeping the heart free from any negative states that may have arisen within him. Next, the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, continues generating the strong desire and fervency within him as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any not yet arisen wholesome and good merit-making qualities or thoughts do arise in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly purify his heart, by engendering positive states of mind to enduringly flow and keep arising within him. And the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged, and with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him, he applies himself with a genuine effort and dedication, making sure that all arisen, wholesome, and good merit-making qualities or thoughts keep being cultivated in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly develop and purify his heart while maintaining and strengthening the already arisen positive states of mind to continuously develop and keep flourishing within him as they reach maturity. Therefore, bhikkhus, you must practice these four right efforts in order to give up and overcome the tendency to grab on to these five aggregates. Orambhagya Sutta The Lower Fetters Bhikkhus, 
There are these five lower fetters that keep you chained up and stuck to the sensual worlds. What are these five? The view of having a substantial and independent self. Being uncertain and doubtful about the Dhamma, unable to distinguish it from all that is Adhamma. Believing that the practice of traditional rites, rituals, and the mere keeping of rules and precepts will somehow enable you to attain release. Craving for and indulging in sensual stimulation. And being malicious and hateful. These bhikkhus are therefore the five lower fetters that keep you chained up and stuck to the sensual worlds. Now, bhikkhus, to give up and overcome these five lower fetters, you must practice the four right efforts. And what are these four? Here, the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, begins by generating the strong desire and fervency within him as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any not yet arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not arise in the heart in the first place, as he guards himself by keeping the heart free from any negative states from ever arising within him. Next, the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged, and with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him, applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not remain nor be tolerated in the heart. This he does as he abandons them immediately at the first sign of their presence, as he keeps ignoring and dropping them, while keeping the heart free from any negative states that may have arisen within him. Next, the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, continues generating the strong desire and fervency within him, as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any not yet arisen wholesome and good merit-making qualities or thoughts do arise in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly purify his heart by engendering positive states of mind to enduringly flow and keep arising within him. And the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him, as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that all arisen, wholesome and good merit-making qualities or thoughts keep being cultivated in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly develop and purify his heart, while maintaining and strengthening the already arisen positive states of mind to continuously develop and keep flourishing within him as they reach maturity. Therefore, bhikkhus, you must practice these four right efforts in order to give up and overcome the five lower fetters. Gati Sutta Destinations for Rebirth Bhikkhus, there are these five destinations where rebirth takes place. What five? The hells, the animal world, the sphere of miserable ghosts, the human realm, and the realm of the gods, the devas. These bhikkhus are therefore the five destinations where rebirth takes place. Now bhikkhus, to give up and go beyond these five destinations where rebirth takes place, you must practice the four right efforts. And what are these four? Here, the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, begins by generating the strong desire and fervency within him, as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any not yet arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not arise in the heart in the first place, as he guards himself by keeping the heart free from any negative states from ever arising within him. Next, the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged and with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him, applies himself with genuine effort and dedication making sure that any arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts 
do not remain nor be tolerated in the heart. This he does as he abandons them immediately at the first sign of their presence, as he keeps ignoring and dropping them while keeping the heart free from any negative states that may have arisen within him. Next, the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, continues generating the strong desire and fervency within him as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any not yet arisen wholesome and good merit-making qualities or thoughts do arise in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly purify his heart, by engendering positive states of mind to enduringly flow and keep arising within him. And the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that all arisen wholesome and good merit-making qualities or thoughts keep being cultivated in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly develop and purify himself while maintaining and strengthening the already arisen positive states of mind to continuously develop and keep flourishing within him as they reach maturity. Therefore, bhikkhus, you must practice these four right efforts in order to give up and go beyond these five destinations where rebirth takes place. Machariya Sutta on stinginess. Because there are these five kinds of stinginess. What five? Being stingy with one's home or living space. Being stingy with one's supporters, unwilling to share them or introduce them to other recluses. Being stingy with whatever you, as a bhikkhu, have been offered. Being stingy with the renown and praise you have received. And being unwilling to share, and instead being stingy with the Dhamma itself. These bhikkhus are therefore the five kinds of stinginess. Now bhikkhus, to give up and overcome these five kinds of stinginess, you must practice the four right efforts. And what are these four? Here, the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, begins by generating the strong desire and fervency within him as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any not yet arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not arise in the heart in the first place, as he guards himself by keeping the heart free from any negative states from ever arising within him. Next, the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged, and with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him, applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not remain nor be tolerated in the heart. This he does as he abandons them immediately at the first sign of their presence, as he keeps ignoring and dropping them while keeping the heart free from any negative states that may have arisen within him. Next, the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, continues generating the strong desire and fervency within him, as he applies himself with a genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any not yet arisen wholesome and good merit-making qualities or thoughts do arise in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly purify his heart by engendering positive states of mind to enduringly flow and keep arising within him. Also, the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged and, with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him, applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that all arisen, wholesome and good merit-making qualities or thoughts keep being cultivated in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly develop and purify his heart, while maintaining and strengthening the already arisen positive states of mind to continuously develop and keep flourishing within him as they reach maturity. Therefore, bhikkhus, you must practice these four right efforts 
in order to give up and overcome these five kinds of stinginess. Uddhambhagya Sutta on the higher fetters. Bhikkhus, there are these five higher fetters. What are these five? Desiring and being eager to gain rebirth in the form realms of Brahma. Desiring and being eager to gain rebirth in the formless realms. Possessing conceit within the heart. Being agitated and restless in the heart. And ignorance. These bhikkhus are therefore the five higher fetters. Now bhikkhus, to give up and overcome these five higher fetters, you must practice the four right efforts. And what are these four? Here, the bhikkhu, while engaging himself fully, begins by generating the strong desire and fervency within him. As he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any not yet arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not arise in the heart in the first place, as he guards himself by keeping the heart free from any negative states from ever arising within him. Next, the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him. As he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not remain nor be tolerated in the heart. This he does as he abandons them immediately at the first sign of their presence, as he keeps ignoring and dropping them while keeping the heart free from any negative states that may have arisen within him. Next, the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, continues generating the strong desire and fervency within him as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any not yet arisen wholesome and good merit-making qualities or thoughts do arise in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly purify his heart, by engendering positive states of mind to enduringly flow and keep arising within him. And the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged, and with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him, he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that all arisen wholesome and good merit-making qualities or thoughts keep being cultivated in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly develop and purify his heart while maintaining and strengthening the already arisen positive states of mind to continuously develop and keep flourishing within him as they reach maturity. Therefore, bhikkhus, you must practice these four right efforts in order to give up and overcome these five higher fetters. Cheto Kila Sutta The Lifeless, Jaded and Parched Heart because there are these five things that make the heart lifeless, jaded and parched. Now what are these five? Here the bhikkhu is uncertain, hesitant, confused, with many doubts and suspicions, still not yet convinced, nor settled in his faith and trust towards the teacher. Now, when the bhikkhu is uncertain, hesitant, confused, with many doubts and suspicions, still not yet convinced nor settled in his faith and trust towards the teacher, i.e., Lord Buddha, then he does not feel safe in his heart. Instead, he remains agitated, unable to exert or apply himself. As a result of his lacking in faith and trust in the teacher, bhikkhus, he does not possess the ardor or perseverance to push himself forward with resoluteness to attain the goal of the holy life. This, because is the first of the five things that make the heart lifeless, jaded, and parched. Again, the bhikkhu is uncertain, hesitant, confused, with many doubts and suspicions, still not yet convinced nor settled in his 
faith and trust towards the Dhamma. Now when the bhikkhu is uncertain, hesitant, confused, with many doubts and suspicions, still not yet convinced nor settled in his faith and trust towards the Dhamma, then he does not feel safe in his heart. Instead, he remains agitated, unable to exert or apply himself. As a result of his lacking in faith and trust in the Dhamma, bhikkhus, he does not possess the ardor or perseverance to push himself forward with resoluteness to attain the goal of the holy life. This bhikkhus is the second of the five things that make the heart lifeless, jaded and parched. Again, the bhikkhu is uncertain, hesitant, confused, with many doubts and suspicions, still not yet convinced nor settled in his faith and trust towards the Sangha. Now when the bhikkhu is uncertain, hesitant, confused, with many doubts and suspicions, still not yet convinced nor settled in his faith and trust towards the Sangha, then he does not feel safe in his heart. Instead, he remains agitated, unable to exert nor apply himself. As a result of his lacking in faith and trust in the Sangha, bhikkhus, he does not possess the ardor or perseverance to push himself forward with resoluteness to attain the goal of the holy life. This, bhikkhus, is the third of the five things that make the heart lifeless, jaded and parched. Next, the bhikkhu is uncertain, hesitant, confused, with many doubts and suspicions, still not yet convinced nor settled in his faith and trust towards the training. Now, when the bhikkhu is uncertain, hesitant, confused, with many doubts and suspicions, still not yet convinced nor settled in his faith and trust towards the training, then he does not feel safe in his heart. Instead, he he remains agitated, unable to exert or apply himself. As a result of his lacking in faith and trust in the training, because he does not possess the ardor or perseverance to push himself forward with resoluteness to attain the goal of the holy life. This, because is the fourth of the five ways that make the heart lifeless, jaded and parched. Also, the bhikkhu is unhappy with his fellow monastics, where he becomes contentious, angry and upset, as well as irritable and aggressive towards them. Now when the bhikkhu is unhappy with his fellow monastics, where he becomes contentious, angry and upset, as well as irritable and aggressive towards them, then he does not feel safe in his heart. Instead, he remains agitated, unable to exert or apply himself. As a result of his anger and irritability towards his fellow monastics, because he does not possess the ardor or perseverance to push himself forward with resoluteness to attain the goal of the holy life. This, because is the fifth of the five things that make the heart lifeless, jaded and parched. Now, because to give up and overcome these five things that make the heart lifeless, jaded and parched, you must practice the four right efforts. And what are these four? Here, the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, begins by generating the strong desire and fervency within him, as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any not yet arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not arise in the heart in the first place as he guards himself by keeping the heart free from any negative states from ever arising within him. Next, the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any arisen, unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not remain nor be tolerated in the heart. This he does as he abandons them immediately at the first sign of their presence, as he keeps ignoring and dropping them, while keeping the heart free from any negative states that may have arisen within him. Next, 
the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, continues generating the strong desire and fervency within him, as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any not yet arisen wholesome and good merit-making qualities or thoughts do arise in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly purify his heart, by engendering positive states of mind to enduringly flow and keep arising within him. Further, the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that all arisen wholesome and good merit-making qualities or thoughts keep being cultivated in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly develop and purify his heart while maintaining and strengthening the already arisen positive states of mind to continuously develop and keep flourishing within him as they reach maturity. Therefore, bhikkhus, you must practice these four right efforts in order to give up and overcome these five things that make the heart lifeless, jaded, and parched. Chetaso Vinibandha Sutta Shackles of the Heart Bhikkhus, there are these five shackles that bind the heart, holding it as their prisoner. What are these five? Here, Bhikkhus, the Bhikkhu still has within his heart passion and lust, possessing the desire to experience sensual pleasures, craving them, with a strong longing and thirst to re-experience them while being attached to them. However, when the bhikkhu does not obtain the object of his yearning, for which he feels much passion and lust, possessing the desire for sensual pleasures, which he craves with a strong longing and thirst to re-experience while being attached to them, then, as a result, He does not possess the ardor or perseverance to push himself forward with resoluteness to attain the goal of the holy life. This, because is the first of the five shackles that bind the heart, holding it as its prisoner. Next, the bhikkhu still has within his heart passion and lust for the physical body, possessing the desire to experience various things through it, craving as he does with a strong longing and thirst to re-experience them through it while being attached to it. However, when the bhikkhu does not obtain the object of his yearning pertaining to the physical body, for which he feels much passion and lust, possessing the desire for the physical body which he craves with a strong longing and thirst to re-experience while being attached to it, then... As a result, he does not possess the ardor or perseverance to push himself forward with resoluteness to attain the goal of the holy life. This because is the second of the five shackles that bind the heart, holding it as its prisoner. Next, the bhikkhu still has within his heart passion and lust for the material forms possessing the desire to experience various material forms, craving as he does with a strong longing and thirst to re-experience them while being attached to them. However, when the bhikkhu does not obtain the object of his yearning pertaining to material forms, for which he feels much passion and lust, possessing the desire for material forms, which he craves with a strong longing and thirst to re-experience, while being attached to them, then, as a result, he does not possess the ardor or perseverance to push himself forward with resoluteness to attain the goal of the holy life. This because is the third of the five shackles that bind the heart, holding it as its prisoner. Next, the bhikkhu still has within his heart passion and lust for food, craving as he does with a strong longing and hunger to fill his belly with various kinds of delicious food, to the point of bursting, 
due to his attachment to them, after which he seeks to lie down and rest, spending his time enjoying the comfort of sleep, becoming drowsy, slothful, and procrastinating. However, when he lives while having passion and lust for food still beating strongly in his heart, craving as he does, with a strong longing and hunger, to fill his belly with various kinds of delicious food, to the point of bursting, due to his attachment to them, after which he seeks to lie down and rest, spending his time enjoying the comfort of sleep, becoming drowsy, slothful, and procrastinating. Then, as a result, the bhikkhu does not possess the ardor or perseverance to push himself forward with resoluteness to attain the goal of the holy life. This, because is the fourth of the five shackles that bind the heart, holding it as its prisoner. And the bhikkhu still has within his heart passion and lust for rebirth into the divine realms of the devas, possessing the desire to reappear among the gods, where he may enjoy heavenly bliss and delights along with all the pleasures they provide. Thus he contemplates by reasoning to himself. I am engaging in these various virtuous actions, behaving while avoiding various misconducts, as I assiduously observe customs, austerities, chanting, and adhering to rites and rituals, so that I could live a spiritual life that would lead me to the divine realms. However, when the bhikkhu still has within his heart passion and lust for rebirth into the divine realms of the devas, possessing the desire to reappear among the gods, where he may enjoy heavenly pleasures and delights, thus contemplating to himself, I am engaging in various virtuous actions, behaving while avoiding various misconducts, as I assiduously observe customs, austerities, chanting, and adhering to rites and rituals, so that I could live a spiritual life that would lead me to the divine realms, then, as a result, he does not possess the ardor or perseverance to push himself forward with resoluteness to attain the goal of the holy life. This, because, therefore, is the fifth of the five shackles that bind the heart, holding it as its prisoner. Now, bhikkhus, to break free from these five shackles that bind the heart, holding it as its prisoner, you must practice the four right efforts. And what are these four? Here, the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, begins by generating the strong desire and fervency within him, as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any not yet arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not arise in the heart in the first place. As he guards himself, by keeping the heart free from any negative states from ever arising within him. Next, the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, making sure that any arisen unwholesome or evil qualities or thoughts do not remain nor be tolerated in the heart. This he does as he abandons them immediately at the first sign of their presence, as he keeps ignoring and dropping them while keeping the heart free from any negative states that may have arisen within him. Next, the bhikkhu, while engaging fully, continues generating the strong desire and fervency within him as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication making sure that any not yet arisen wholesome and good merit-making qualities or thoughts do arise in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly purify his heart, by engendering positive states of mind to enduringly flow and keep arising within him. And the bhikkhu continues being fully engaged, with the strong desire and ongoing fervency in him, as he applies himself with genuine effort and dedication, 
making sure that all arisen wholesome and good merit-making qualities or thoughts keep being cultivated in the heart. This he does by encouraging himself to constantly develop and purify his heart, while maintaining and strengthening the already arisen positive states of mind to continuously develop and keep flourishing within him as they reach maturity. Therefore, bhikkhus, in order to break free from these five shackles that bind the heart, holding it as their prisoner, you must practice these four right efforts. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.